Today, we're going to talk about a big ticket lawsuit that didn't only affect one band, but affected the ultimate distribution of rock concert revenues between bands and Ticketmaster. Pearl Jam uh, was fronted by Eddie Vedder, and it was a very independently minded band. Uh, and they were upset that Ticketmaster had control of all of the best venues in every city. And what Ticketmaster would do is they would go and get an exclusive with the venues that they wouldn't allow any other acts to play there. And you would say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, according to Pearl Jam and their lawsuit in 1994 against Ticketmaster, Ticketmaster was charging exorbitant fees, uh, $3 to $4 a ticket, that could add 30 percent or more to the face value of a ticket. And Pearl Jam worked in concert with the Justice Department, which initiated an investigation of uh, Ticketmaster, and it was beginning to get traction. Now, Pearl Jam was about to go on tour, and they were uh, going to support their new album, uh, VS. Uh, but they had a problem. And the problem was, on principle, they weren't going to play any of the venues with Ticketmaster. And they were going to show the rock world how it's done. You, you don't need the man. You don't need Ticketmaster. Well, the problem was that working around Ticketmaster, which had cherry-picked all the best venues, um, proved impossible. They were really unable to get a viable tour going. And in fact, their tour got delayed. Um, and the release of their album got delayed because of the inability to um, uh, have the support from the concerts. And Eddie Vedder would get phone calls about porta potties uh, and the price of them in uh, you know, some, some of these venues. Uh, fast forward, the Justice Department uh, decided not to proceed uh, forward uh, against Ticketmaster. So at a certain level, Ticketmaster won. The lawsuit didn't go anywhere. Uh, it ultimately was dismissed. Uh, Pearl Jam got shown up that if you want to go around our venues, uh, it's not really going to be successful. And you would think that that would be the end of it, that uh, Pearl Jam lost and um, all of the money that they lost from the delayed dates on the tour and whatnot was really all for naught. Uh, the uh, rock and roll torch carriers uh, against the man, uh, Ticketmaster. But that's really not quite um, how it ultimately turned out. In fact, there was a class action filed in California against Ticketmaster that paralleled the accusations that uh, Eddie Vedder and Pearl Jam had made against Ticketmaster, which resulted in a settlement for $397 million, uh, which had to hurt um, Ticketmaster. Of course, when you see a class action settlement that looks like a lot of money, in fact, that wasn't actually cash, a voucher for $2.50 against a future purchase uh, from a Ticketmaster venue. So um, you uh, didn't actually put money in your pocket. And in fact, on those transactions, Ticketmaster was still um, making money. Uh, additionally, uh, ultimately, uh, Pearl Jam got into the fold of uh, Ticketmaster by using their safe tick technology. Uh, and Ticketmaster developed a way to combat the secondary market that mandated that only the person that had done the original purchase would be able to get into the arena, which effectively had the function of eliminating the secondary market and lowering prices, uh, which frankly is something that Pearl Jam wanted. And it most certainly did give access to uh, major groups like Pearl Jam to the rank and file consumers 
um, as opposed to situations where the robots would purchase all of the um, uh, tickets, which would um, uh, then only be available on the uh, on the secondary market. So ultimately, uh, Pearl Jam and uh, Ticketmaster uh, made nice, but uh, being a uh, courageous uh, and aggressive uh, advocate for um, rock and roll bands rights, um, uh, Pearl Jam led the way. 